Oh, oh, hey everyone. Welcome to our virtual career day. I feel like this was gonna be kind of a virtual job shadowing or anyway, something we could do that would be kind of fun for your career chapel this week since I didn't get to come last week because you guys are out of school. Anyway, um, we wanna talk about what does an optometrist do? Let's talk about what is an optometrist. I guess that's uh, maybe the first step is the difference between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist. People ask me that a lot. An optometrist is what I am. I'm an optometrist and we go to school, you go to four years of college and then four years of optometry school. And then when you're an optometrist, you can treat eye diseases like glaucoma, red eyes, with eye infections, macular degeneration, all of these sorts of things that don't require surgery. And an ophthalmologist is somebody who goes to four years of college, four years of medical school, but then also does a residency after that, I think it's like seven years. And they actually learn how to do surgery and do things like cataract surgery, glaucoma surgeries, anything that's going to need something cut off or cut into. Um, and that's the main difference between optometrist and ophthalmologist. So I am an optometrist and that is basically what takes up most of my day is using this thing right here. And this is called a foropter. Fun fact for you there. But the foropter helps me do what's called a refraction. In a refraction, if you've ever been to the optometrist before, you've probably done this. You sit in front of this, or you sit behind this thing, I guess I sit in front of it, and I ask you, which one's better? The letters are, you know, on the chart back here behind you, and you're looking at a mirror on the other side of the room. I say, which one's better between number one or number two? Number one or number two? And I do that lots and lots of times throughout the day, uh, because that's how we find out your prescription. That's how we figure out which one you like best, so that you end up with glasses that can help you see as clearly as possible. So we do a lot of this, that's a routine eye exam. Um, a routine eye exam would, would include finding a glasses prescription and making sure that everything is healthy inside the eye. We'll look at a picture of the retina here in a little bit. Um, but just making sure that everything's healthy on the front part of the eye too, everywhere in the eye. Just overall eye health and then vision, making sure people can see really clearly. And the microscope here is what helps me to see inside people's eyes and see the front part of people's eyes. And again, if you've been to the optometrist, you've been in here before, and people put their head here, I look in from this side, and it's just like any other microscope, it makes things look bigger. So if I'm trying to see a little bump on someone's eye, I can look at it and make it a lot larger, and I can see all the little details in the microscope. Uh, that's the main thing that we do day in and day out. There are, of course, random things that happen throughout the day that you're not really expecting. You'll, you'll work in somebody who has something stuck in their eye. And so people will get metal stuck in their eye if they're not wearing their safety glasses. Wear your safety glasses, but people will be wearing their safety glasses when they're grinding metal and they'll get a piece of metal stuck in their eyes every once in a while. We have to go in and use this little, it's, it's kind of like a little drill actually, and it spins and I don't know if you'd be able to hear this thing if I bring it up close enough, but anyway, that is, eh, you can't probably hear it. Anyway, it's got a little spinning tip, a little drill that you go in there and you have to drill out that rust that's left after metal gets in somebody's eye. So that's something kind of exciting that, <laughs> that may happen throughout the day um, of an optometrist's life. And um, anyway, those are, those are kind of the basics. But I do want to show you, I'll show you kind of what a patient goes through when someone comes in, where we take them in the office. We, show, we go through the, the pre-testing area over here. We'll come back in the room and look at some of the results from those pre-tests. Um, and then kind of, I think, wrap it up after that. So let's go out there. So after a patient gets here and they check in at the front desk, they wait and fill out all the paperwork, the first thing they do when they come back with the, the, the tech, the person that's gonna work them up and get them ready for their eye exam is get some of these tests done. This one's the one that everybody loves so much. This is the air puff machine. Um, the air puff machine is, it, this is what, exactly what it sounds like. You put your head here, blow some air at your eye, and you feel this little puff of air right in your eye but it checks the pressure inside your eye. And that's really important because pressure is a, a big factor when we're thinking about glaucoma. Glaucoma is an eye disease that can make people go blind. And this is a great way to kind of screen for that. And if we see someone with high eye pressure, we know we need to do more work and look into glaucoma a little bit more seriously. This one takes a measurement of your eyeball, the length of your eyeball and the curvature of the front parts and kind of takes a guess as to what a glasses prescription might be. So that when we get in the room, we have a starting point for that refraction. I was telling you about the one or two, one or two. And then this one's really cool. This is our, our new camera. Um, this is pretty fancy technology. And this camera takes a picture of the back of the eye. We had a camera before that would take a picture kind of straight to the back of the eye, but this one does a better job and somehow kind of sees around a corner when it's looking through your pupil and it can show us so much more of the back of the eye than our old one did. And so that's a great way to get an idea of the health of the inside of the back of the eye. And I, and I really love that machine and it helps me do my job a whole lot easier. So let's go back in the room and we'll look at some of the results from some of these machines and some of the others. 
So I was telling you about that camera and how it can see into the back of the eye and see a whole lot more than what our old camera did. Our old camera would show us about this much of the back of the eye, which was helpful. That was still good to be able to see. This is the optic nerve, and then you can see these blood vessels coming out here. And, and this one looks healthy. This is a normal eyeball. So the camera that we have out there, any camera, I guess, and what I do when I look in the microscope, when we're looking into somebody's eye, what we're doing is we're looking through that hole. When you look in the mirror, you see that black hole in the middle of your eye, it's called your pupil. It's just a hole and that's what we're looking through. The camera sees in here and takes a picture inside the back of the eye and sees all of the retina. And so when we don't have a big pupil, sometimes we'll have to dilate people's eyes and maybe you've had that done before. We put eye drops in people's eyes and it makes this pupil get really big and so that we can see back there a lot easier with some of our instruments. But that camera out in the hallway can see through that pupil a lot easier than, uh, than what our camera did in the past. And so we can see a picture that looks like this, and we can see all the way around back here and see so many things in the back of the eye and make sure that everything is healthy. So let me show you a picture of an eye that does not look healthy. Of course, this is a demonstration picture from the company that makes that camera. They're, they're just showing you all the different things that you can see in the back of the eye that might pop up on that camera. It doesn't mean one person. If one person had all of this, they'd be out of luck. They're, they're just not going to see very well. But it can show you, I mean, it can see when someone has a retinal detachment, it's going to look like that. And this is bad news because that causes blindness wherever that retinal detachment happens. And that can end up going all the way across the eye. And then there are scars and, and diabetes is a big thing with eyes because we can see a lot of the evidence of that in the back of your eyes. And so they, they label this here called retinal hemorrhages, but that's just little bits of blood that are leaking in the back of the eye. And when we look in, in the eye, we can see if there are little leaking blood vessels and that gives us a clue to, hey, this person might have some blood pressure or some blood sugar issues and they might have diabetes or they might have something else going on. And so we send them to get that tested. They show a floater here and some of you might even have floaters. You guys are pretty young, uh, but floaters are pretty common. And it's just when you're, I notice it when I'm laying on my back, when there's a bright, clear blue sky and it's a bright sunny day and I see these little like spots, these little gray spots or almost clear spots and those are floaters and they're totally normal they're, it's not a problem at all it's not going to hurt you or anything they're just annoying and so we'll see floaters in the camera sometimes um, and they're showing tears other leaking blood vessels this is different ways that the blood can leak back here um, all kinds of things people have found tumors in the back of eyes before and so actually ended up saving people's lives if you find a tumor in the back of their eye and send them soon enough to get that get that taken out uh, it may save their life because then you can keep it from spreading to their brain or spreading to different parts of their body. So getting your eyes checked regularly and making sure that none of this is going on in the back of your eyes. We want all of your eyes to look more like this picture. Uh, and I, I'm sure they probably most of them do. But that's, that's what a routine eye exam is for, is we look in the back of the eye to make sure that it looks like this and not like the other picture. Um, I told you a little bit about the... Um, a little bit about the red eyes that we'll see come in. People come in with eye infections or different things going on. And so I wanted to show you a picture of one that looks probably pretty creepy. Uh, that's blood right there. So this is the white part of the eye. It's supposed to be white, but this person's eye is full of, full of blood. This is called a subconjunctival hemorrhage. And that sounds really bad. That sounds kind of intimidating. It sounds like this person's going to be blind. But really all that means is that this is a bruise. That's just like having a bruise on your arm. It's, it's no big deal. You just let it go away over time. It'll go away over you know a couple weeks or so. Um, and you just, there's nothing to do. For, there's no eye drop to make it go away faster. There's nothing to do. You just wait. You just have to sit there just like you would for a bruise on your arm. The reason that that looks red and while a bruise on your arm looks a little bit different is because you're looking through a thick layer of skin when you look at your arm. And so you're seeing like a dark spot. There's blood under there when there's a bruise, but the layer of skin over the white part of your eye is clear. And so you're seeing straight through to the blood. So it looks really bad, but when people come like into our office, when they look like this, we always kind of go, oh yeah, no big deal. You know, it's okay. You're going to be just fine. You got to calm them down because they're probably pretty nervous that they've got this on their eye um, because it looks pretty bad when they look in the mirror, but not too big of a deal. And we actually don't uh, usually have them do any kind of treatment. They just wait it out and let it go away over the next few weeks. Uh, there was one more machine back in that corner over there that isn't really one of the machines we do on everybody, but I did tell you about glaucoma. The air puff machine checks the pressure inside the eye, and that's a screener test for glaucoma. Well, then if we get somebody in the room and we look in their eye and we do the eye exam and we, we look at the optic nerve right here and it looks suspicious for glaucoma, we'll end up doing more measurements. We have other machines that can take other measurements for us, and we'll do something called an OCT. And this is actually mine. This is my OCT because I've had this done on my eye because my eye actually looks a little bit suspicious for glaucoma. So I've had this done on me lots of times. It's just basically another fancy picture. It doesn't hurt or anything. 
but it takes a bunch of measurements and gives us all this information. So my eye looks suspicious for glaucoma, but these numbers right here tell me that it's not glaucoma. They say that, um, that I'm okay, but I need to keep watching it to make sure that I know if it ever turns into glaucoma so that I can start taking eye drops to lower my eye pressure to keep it from getting any worse. Um, so anyway, like I said, there's just lots of things that we do here at the optometrist as far as eye health and then preventing diseases from getting worse uh, or preventing diseases in the first place maybe, helping people see clearly and um, treating I mean, red eyes, all kinds of ear, or <laughs> ear, all kinds of eye infections and that sort of thing. But anyway, I hope that little tour, that little uh, virtual job shadowing that we did was entertaining for you and educational at the same time. And then maybe when all of the uh, coronavirus stuff has calmed down and this pandemic is gone, you guys can come see me for an eye exam and, and experience it firsthand because it's always a good thing to get an eye exam, even if you don't feel like something is going wrong. And glaucoma, like what I just showed you, is actually, that's a perfect example of that because glaucoma doesn't cause you to have blurry vision or doesn't cause you to lose vision until the very, very end stage when it makes you go blind. So with eye care, we like to prevent things from happening instead of waiting until it's already there and then trying to catch up, you know? So it's, it's a lot better to prevent anything from happening with your eyes. So get your eyes checked regularly, make sure they stay healthy. Uh, and a lot of times people don't even know that their vision's blurry. And so that can be pretty helpful too, just coming to get an eye exam and you may go, whoa, hey, all of a sudden, I didn't even realize that my vision was blurry and now I need glasses. And now I have glasses on, I can see so much more clearly. Uh, there are a lot, a, lot, a lot of stories like that. So. Anyway, whenever this is all over, you guys can come see me and get your eyes checked and uh, we'll have some fun and uh, do some of these things that I just showed you and make sure that your eyes are healthy and that you can see really clearly. So I hope you guys have a great day and hope you enjoyed this uh, career chapel, the virtual career, maybe the first, am I the first person to do a virtual career chapel? Um, <laughs> anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day studying while you're at home. So have a good one, everybody.